And that is why this is important. So for Miss Lisa Chesney, you know, Ambassador David Reimer, you know, Ambassador Muller, all of you guys, we want you guys to understand the importance of the local council elections. It's like a warm-up. It is creating an opportunity for the people to understand that, you know, um, again, get their exercise together, get their voter ID cards together, get ready for 2023 elections, which is just around the corner. Don't forget the SLPP has barely about what? Um, 10 months left in power, about 10 or, 11, or, or, or 9 months left. Because in, in, in April of this year, in a few months from now, two months from now, all local council is going to be dissolved. Who is going to be there to intercede on behalf of the people? And that is why we have our elections in, in, in May and June. And we cannot afford to allow these guys to postpone this election under no circumstances. That is why it's important. And that is why I want to call Sierra Leone's attention to this. And that we have to hold our members of parliament accountable. The government was making some claims that they don't have money. There's no finance for elections and this and that. And they just want to put everything together. We'll tell you the same, right? Well, um, the uh, other former president, Kuruma, postponed elections. Uh, 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 local council elections back then. Actually, that is a lie because it was the SLPP that actually pushed for the postponement of the local council elections. During former president, Kuruma, during the Ebola time. Because we were supposed to have uh, local council elections. They were the ones, Honorable Lahai, uh, Baradet Lahai. She was the one that actually went back and consulted with the SLPP folks and came back and said, no, the Ebola is ravishing our people in the Southeast. So how are we going to talk about elections? Why is former President Kroma talking about elections? President Kroma should focus on taking care of the Ebola crisis as opposed to thinking about elections. So that is the truth right here. So for the international community, if somebody comes with that lie, that is all it is. It's a lie. It doesn't stand. It doesn't hold. The, the SLPP had an opportunity. They said no to local council elections because they felt like they were not prepared for it. And because the Ebola was there ravaging and killing their people in the southeast. Remember, there was this, uh, uh, you know, honorable member of parliament that uh, actually went across the southeast telling the people that Ebola was uh, was a, uh, it was used by former President Kroma to kill, you know, southeasterners. Lies. And he died from that Ebola. He also died from it. I think something Tamba or Sam or whatever his, his name was. But these are the people. So I want you guys to understand that it's very important that we have the local council elections because it's going to give us an insight into the fact that the people are fed up. If President Bio believes that he has worked for the people, like we said this morning in our audio, if he has worked for Sierra Unions, then this is an opportunity to have the local council elections so the people can go to the ballot and vote and show the SLPP that they've worked or they have not worked. And that is the point I want to make to the international community. And that is why I'm doing this live. Because the local council elections is an opportunity for us to decentralize. We know the SLPP, they've made a couple of moves. And over the past two years, we've been calling everybody's attention to the local council elections. But the SLPP has been making moves to see how they can push this. Let me show you guys something here that I want us everybody to pay attention to. And I want us to read this, uh, you know, um, document from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It is very important from the TRC report, the findings from the TRC report. I want you guys to see this. Let me share this with you. You know, um, it's going to say, you know, the historical antecedent, you know, antecedents to the conflict. So basically what this chapter is doing here is breaking down exactly, you know, the causes of the war, right? So it starts with the introduction there. And it says, in the final decade of the 20th century, Sierra Leone, a tiny country on the coast of West Africa, made up of just 4.5 million people at the time, became the scene of one of the greatest human tra tragedies of our time. On 23rd, December, on 23rd March 1991, armed conflicts broke out in Sierra Leone where when forces crossed the border from Liberia into the town of Bomaru near the eastern frontier. Over the next 11 years, the country was uh, devastated by a complex and bitter war that unleashed appalling brutality against the civilian population. How did a peace-loving nation become engulfed, seemingly overnight, in horror? What events occurred in the history of Sierra Leone to make this conflict possible? Explanations put forward have varied from bad governance into the history of post-colonial period to the urge, you know, to acquire the country's diamond wealth and the roles of Libya or the Liberian faction leader, uh, Charles Taylor. The international community initially dismissed the war in Sierra Leone as just another example of tribal conflict in Africa, another failed state imploding in the context of environmental degradation and acute economic crisis. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the TRC, or the Commission, you know, was established in 2000, with the primary objective to create an impartial historical record 
of the armed conflict in Sierra Leone from the beginning of the conflict in 1991 to the signing of the Lome Peace Agreement. The functions of the commission as set out in its founding act included investigating and reporting on the causes, nature, and extent of the violations and abuses that occurred, including the antecedents to those violations and abuses and the context in which they took place. From its outset, the commission interpreted those provisions broadly, aiming to fulfill the intention of the drafters of the act that the TRC should compile a clear picture of the past. Accordingly, the commission devoted considerable resources towards examining the post-conflict in Sierra Leone. Guys, you know, the reason why I'm giving you guys this historical perspective today for Leona Sinaya, you know, it's uh, for us to understand why these local council elections are very, very important and we the people are demanding, and Sierra Leoneans across the globe should demand that we have a local council elections. The strategy of the SLPP is simple. The SLPP knows they failed. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to suppress the voices of the millions of people out there. But yet we have members of parliament sitting by. And up till now, we've not heard any statements from the APC as a political party on what their stance is, you know, on the, the conduct, conduct, you know, conducting the local council elections this year between May and June. Guys, why am I showing you all of this? Let me show you this. You see, the budget has been allocated for the local council elections. And I want everybody to understand before I even talk about, you know, talk about the history of the local council elections. But this is the budget for NEC. When you look at this right here, but at least you guys can see right here what is happening. I'm going to zoom in in certain areas so you guys can see. So, but the National, the Electoral Commission of Sierra Leone, this is how much has been allocated to them. NEC, Conduct and Education of, uh, of Elections. $212 billion has been allocated for elections alone. Where the neck as a whole get a total of 336 billion neons. Let me show you guys here. This is how much has been allocated to neck as an institution to conduct elections as well as their general administration and everything. So this has been allocated. The funds is there. The European Union knows about this. They've, 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 this is what the government budgeted for elections in Sierra Leone for local council elections. Sierra Leoneans, we're doing these lives not to come here and play, but to ensure that we protect our democracy. We've had local council elections because as part of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, it was very important that we have local council elections. Guys, all the time I've come here and show you videos of people getting sick across our countries. These people have members of parliament representing them. These, these people have uh, council members representing them. These people belong to wards. They belong to constituencies. That is why we have these local council elections, so we can have people to intercede on behalf of the people between the people and the government. That is the importance of local council elections. We've had it since 2004, after the rebel war. That was the number one recommendation from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. That is incumbent on us to ensure that we have local council elections. So the SLPP, they smell this, and they know that if they conduct the local council elections right now, this very moment, they will be squashed and destroyed across that country, including in the southeastern part of Sierra Leone. So they don't want the, the, the world to see that. And the importance also is the fact that once this happens and we have the local council elections, it gives us a clear picture into what's going to happen on the outcome of the 2023 elections. And the SLPP does not want us to see that. And that is why this is important. You pay one. Why because the government be they pay one, then your family pay. That's for the whole year. What did they pay for one of you picking? Now 90,000. Now they say free quality education. Mm. Now when you don't pass back, we now we pass back for go S1. What you wanna pay? Five hundred, four hundred. Exactly. We now we come on MPSC for go. What you wanna pay? Two fifty, three hundred. How we go call and free? I want me to tell me. Now quality education or now quantity education? No way. Now college. This this college you know where they say mother they can't open. This college where they say mother they can't open. I know where let anybody buy food now. That college in Amida Bonumbu as region parliamentary. Now me mobilize people there, but I declare I get to arrest them all. That time I declare they as opposition leaders. Oh, 
Are you seller? Yeah. Well, then the talk will change. But none of them face must change. Then the old player with new vest inside the game. Green again, boom. All two not the same. And in on 12, we post, because they will not go against them again. This is so not so forget. 